Paddle Lane, the wide awake mice find a new home. Candletown, can you find Puddle Lane? The wide awake mice find a new home. The wide awake mice were toy mice in Mr. Wide Awake's toy shop. One evening, the magician came into the shop. He didn't see the wide awake mice, but he spilt some magic dust all over them. That night, when the moon shone down, the wide awake mice came alive. They escaped from the shop through a hole under the door and they ran across the square to the market. They climbed up a post and found a safe place to live on a shelf under the roof. This is another story about their adventures. The Wide Awake Mice It was Friday evening. Friday was market day in Candletown. Every Friday after the people had gone home, the Wide Awake Mice went into the market. The wide awake mice went into the market. They ate pieces of cheese and pieces of cake. They ate nuts and carrots and apples until Grandmother Mouse said, I can't eat another thing. And Grandfather Mouse said, it's time to go home. He went to the post to climb up to the roof and the other mice followed him. The wide awake mice ate nuts and cheese. The moon was just coming up over the houses. It shone on the market building. Jeremy Mouse was just going to climb up the post to the roof when he saw a big nut lying on the floor. I must just get that nut, said Jeremy. Jeremy saw a nut. The other mice were all climbing the post. Jeremy ran across to the nut. He was just going to pick it up when a voice said, you leave that alone, that's mine. Jeremy looked up and saw a big rat. Go away, cried the rat. Go away or I'll bite you and don't let me see you again. Jeremy saw a rat. But I live here, said Jeremy. If I see you again, you won't live here any longer, said the rat. Go away and don't come back. Jeremy ran away. He ran back to the post. He climbed up and met Aunt Jane. Aunt Jane was just coming to look for him. Jeremy ran away. He met Aunt Jane. There's a big rat down there in the market, Aunt Jane, cried Jeremy. He said that I couldn't live here any longer. I think he meant that he'd eat me. All the other mice crowded round to listen. Oh dear, oh dear, said Aunt Matilda. Whatever shall we do? We must go away, said Grandfather Mouse. Rats are very dangerous. We must find somewhere else to live. Grandfather Mouse said, we must go away. Let's go and live in the magician's garden, said Jeremy. I met a mouse the other day. His name is Chestnut, and he lives in a hollow tree in the garden. It sounds a good place, said Grandfather Mouse. But how do we get there? We don't know the way. I do, said Miranda. I've been there. I saw the magician. The magician's house is in Puddle Lane. Then you can show us the way, said Grandfather Mouse. We'll start at once. Miranda said, I saw the magician. The magician's house is in Puddle Lane.
The mice were soon ready to go. Miranda and Jeremy made their clothes into bundles, and Aunt Jane helped them to tie the bundles on their backs with string. Then they all ran down the post to Market Square. The wide awake mice ran down the post. They were just going to start out across the square when Uncle Maximus said, I smell cheese. He looked round a corner and saw the cheese. There was a little bit of cheese on a spike. Uncle Maximus was just going to eat it when Aunt Jane called out, Don't touch it! It's a trap! Uncle Maximus saw the cheese. Uncle Maximus jumped sideways, but he was just too late. The trap went snap. It caught the end of his tail. Help, cried Uncle Maximus. Help. The trap went snap. The other mice tried to pull the trap open, but it was much too strong. They pulled and they pulled and they pulled, but they couldn't pull up the wire. The mice pulled and they pulled and they pulled. Aunt Jane took Grandfather's stick. We'll open it with this, she said. She pushed, the, she pushed the stick under the wire. Grandfather pushed on one end of the stick, and Aunt Jane pushed on the other. Miranda ran to help Grandfather push, and Jeremy helped Aunt Jane. They pushed, and they pushed, and they pushed. The mice pushed, and they pushed, and they pushed. Slowly, very slowly, the trap began to open. Pull out your tail, cried Aunt Jane. Uncle Maximus pulled out his tail. The mice let go of the stick, and the trap snapped too again. Uncle Maximus pulled out his tail. Oh, my poor tail, cried Uncle Maximus. Oh, my poor tail. Come along quickly and don't make a fuss, said Grandfather Mouse, picking up a stick. We must go as fast as we can. Miranda led the way across the square and all the other mice followed. Uncle Maximus carried his tail over his arm. Miranda led the way. They came to the corner of Puddle Lane. Miranda led the way up the lane. They hadn't gone far when they heard a great clatter. The mice all hid in the shadows, but it was only Mrs. Pitter-Patter shutting her window. The wide-awake mice ran on. Mrs. Pitter-Patter shut her window. The wide-awake mice ran on. They hadn't gone far when they heard a great roar. The mice all hid in the shadows, but it was only Mr. Puffle. Mr. Puffle was in bed. He was fast asleep, and he was beginning to snore. The wide-awake mice ran on. Mr. Puffle was in bed. The wide-awake mice ran on. They hadn't gone far when they heard a great bang. The mice all hid in the shadows, but it was only Mr. Go-to-Bed falling out of bed.
The wide awake mice ran on. Mr. Go to bed fell out of bed. The wide awake mice ran on. They came to the gates of the magician's garden. There was Chestnut Mouse. He was sitting under the gate eating a nut. He was very glad to see them. Chestnut Mouse. So the wide awake mice went to live with Chestnut in a hole under the hollow tree in the magician's garden. And while they stayed there, they were all quite safe. The wide awake mice in the hole in the tree.